Hi there. In this video, we will be taking a look at this non-contact voltage detector from PICTEC. I contacted PICTEC because my multimeter stopped working, it was old, quite weak and it stopped working altogether, one of the cables was damaged, yeah, it was a lost cause and asked if PICTEC would like to help the channel with a multimeter. Well, they did more than that. They sent in a beast of a multimeter. For me, this multimeter is like going from a, a pocket calculator with uh, basic uh, functions to a scientific calculator. I have so much to learn and so many possibilities with this that I can I cannot even begin to describe, so thank you very much PICTEC for sending this thing in. A future video will be made and I will start working on it uh, right after uh, this video. And uh, this will be a pleasure to work with. And they even sent a bit more, a magnetic field detector. So this will also be a separate video and another cool tool. But for this video, right at the moment, we are looking at PICTEC 1032 non-contact voltage detector from 12 to 1000 volts AC with vibration. So you cannot miss uh, the notification on this voltage detector. So uh, let's get in the box. And yes, I want to mention it's IP67 rated. So you can basically use this uh, on the outside without any hesitations. And it works with two AAA cells, which are included on the back of it. Green, if it's okay. Red means danger. So let's get into the packaging. Get the batteries out. Good batteries, I want to mention that. GPs, alkalines. And yes, we have a three years warranty on this. Manual, we'll be getting uh, closer with that in a moment. But I really want to see how this feels. And this is nice. So, QC Pest, quite obvious. Let's get that out of the way. If I could actually do it. If you want to see more of PICTEC, this is their website. Let's get this to get a better look at it. Waterproof IP67. And it also has a flashlight. And seems to be quite a decent one seeing by the lens on it. So let's see how we can put in the batteries or maybe just maybe I should read the manual for a moment. So let me uh, take a look at the manual. And yes, uh, just wanted to mention this is a really uh, good um, uh, hint here. Always make sure that uh, uh, the device is working, the test equipment that you are using uh, by simply checking a known live wire. If it beeps, it's obviously working, the batteries are good, no issues whatsoever. But it's always good to test onto something that you know that it should beep on. Browsed through the manual, quite a, a good read, no information unnecessary just to fill pages, everything is uh, useful in here. First I just want to show you factory calibration for this tool. It was done with a Fluke 19100 it seems. Okay, 
let's get that out of the way. I will show you the whole manual, but first let's put the batteries in. So this is a screw in cap. If I could actually unscrew it. Ha, I was actually doing it right, but I didn't realize that this has a long thread. So you need to continue to do this for a while. And you can see it, it is coming out. So a long thread and a small pitch in here. Okay. We have the connections right here, presumably for the LED, because this controls also the LED, the switch right here for this flashlight. And what I think, we need to be careful at the end of it to have uh, this aligned when you put it in here, because this is not rotating with the cap. You can see it, it can stay in one place. So when we put it back, we need to properly align everything with the contact pads right there. So let's get some batteries in. You can see the standard direction right here. Let's open this up and be back in a second. What I always try to tell everybody, uh, do not touch the ends of batteries. You are just giving them a chance to corrode. Hold them from the middle, put them in the device that you need, and that's it. Don't touch any of the contacts ever, if possible. So let's align everything. You can see the seal right there, black, a black O-ring. Make sure you do not cross the thread. And from here the black ring uh, O-ring is already doing some work. I can feel it going harder, so it clearly is uh, sealing. Okay, and we are tight. So now let's go through the manual quickly and at the same time show you on this uh, what the manual tells us. Safety precautions right here. You can pause it anytime to read the manual a bit better. It says it's ergonomic and yes it is, it's really nice in the hand with this uh, rubber, all the dark uh, blue is rubber, this is normal plastic. So we have the test tip with an integrated flash in here, flashlight. And we also have the big flashlight at the end, which can actually be turned on like this, even when the rest is off, so you can simply use it like this. Turn it off. Switch on the device. Press on the power button. Vibrates and it's green showing us it's ready to do some work. When it's green like this, it's in the... Uh, how do you call it? Huh. It's in the 100 to 1000 volts interval. If you need to measure from 12 volts, as long as you press this, it's yellow and it measures from 12 volts, so it increases the sensitivity. When you leave it, again, 100 volts is the minimum. So this is quite nice. Uh, there are measurements that you basically cannot do if you would have this on, because it will just activate. So it's normal for it to measure 12 volts only when you press it. If you want to stop the vibration and sound from the detection, you hold on to this for 3 seconds. And now, in theory, it doesn't beep or vibrate anymore. Hold again for 3 seconds. And now it uh, vibrates and beeps again. Depending on your environment, you might not want to disturb somebody with uh, beeps and uh, vibrations all the time. But the LED will still continue to show you. So, this is how you use it. Again, feel free to pause. I want to mention, uh, huh, do not think that you can measure 12 voltage in your car with it. 
because or detect not really measure i get uh, keep using measure what it's actually detecting because that's a direct current dc this can may uh, detect ac alternating current so it's a difference and uh, yeah it cannot i don't know of any non-contact voltage detector that can actually measure in your car the 12 volts dc and yes this will not detect behind uh, metal cages uh, metal protection uh, on external part of the wires because those basically create faraday cages and stop uh, fields from coming out of the wires and it's impossible for this or any other one to detect them like that let's see yes it automatically shuts down after five minutes and you can also see here the white led that helps us see better what we are detecting even in low light uh, also it will not uh, basically turn on if the batteries uh, are too low so that is really good if it cannot measure it cannot it will not turn on it's a protection this is what we did with the vibration and sound this is how you replace the batteries and these are the specs and notifications about batteries and that's about it for the manual let's take a better look at this now while putting stuff away and readjusting it uh, turned off by itself so it beeped twice vibrated and then shut off so that's working test it even without meaning to test it let's power it on or actually i think by doing this i hold held on to the button for three seconds it actually powered on in the non-beep and non-vibrate way so let's turn it off and now turn it on by just quickly pressing it and now we are in vibrate and beep mode so you can directly turn it on silent if you need to and uh, yeah i will just give you a quick story why this is really useful sometimes a few years ago i was working a lot on computers and when i mean a lot basically every day and i was buying uh, untested computers and at one point i needed a lot of these cables so i bought a bunch of them many many 10 20 who knows many and uh, i was testing a new computer so i basically plug in a cable try to turn on the computer nothing hey what's happening so new cable new computer i was expecting the computer to have an issue start troubleshoot it can't find anything wrong with it then i think hmm, it's a new cable maybe try another one i put in a new cable still no turning on troubleshoot a bit more still don't find anything then i think hmm, new cables never worked with them let's try with a known cable so i took a known cable this is a bad example because this is a new one anyway i took a new cable um, an old cable that i knew it was good and the computer turned on and then i realized that from the batch of 10 or 20 cables that i bought more than 50 percent of them were bad and they didn't have a proper contact inside of this yeah i know how can someone sell something untested like that they basically did I got my money back but anyway it used time for nothing basically something like this could have told me in a second it would be here close to the contact it wouldn't be here okay cable is bad and uh, troubleshooting over in two seconds anyway so it's really useful to have something like this if you suspect anywhere that uh, you have power where uh, you shouldn't or you don't have power where you should there's that uh, i had something similar for a few years but i honestly tell you i never trusted this one i bought it really cheaply 
And I, I never really trusted it because even the LED itself, if you can believe it, it's not working properly. I think it's not even turning on anymore. So how could I trust a tool to tell me if I have a voltage somewhere, if even a simple thing as the LED on it is not working properly? And sometimes it would work, uh, the tool itself, then it would stop. I need to wiggle it a bit, it would start again. So this for me was of no use because I couldn't trust it. That's why a tool like this is 10 times better for a fact as long as you have a LED on in here and that white LED also. You know that the batteries are making contact so it's impossible for them not to make contact because these things are on and the build quality of it compared to this thing is a hundred times better. And basically you are playing with your life here. You need to, to trust uh, the equipment that you are testing with. So let's do just a few quick tests. But uh, as far as I can see, I really, really, really like this tool. Okay, ignore the fact that this isn't on. Work in progress room. Uh, let me show you what's up with the 12 volt button. So, for example, here, it's not getting activated where uh, it's neutral, jeez. <laughs> so, not getting activated, on live, getting activated. So, it has just detection and no detection in this mode. Or, you heard it just, uh, it's just, just at the limit. But look at 12 volt mode. So here, no detection. If we switch to 12 volt and increase the sensitivity a lot, you can hear it. <laughs> and yes, this will beep all over this thing because this has a transformer in it. So it's full of, uh, of fields, which makes sense. But it's really cool to see the difference. So no beeping in normal mode. If we switch to 12 volt, it detects from a mile away. Yeah, really cool tool, honestly. Just wanted to show you what an unreliable tool looks like. Hey, no voltage. But is there no voltage? This socket is just too thick and has too much protection in form of child protection in here for this particular tool to detect it, although it should be from 90 volts where it is it written. It just cannot detect. And I think the light started to somewhat work. So don't trust this at all. So that's about it for this video. Thank you, thank you very much, PicTech, for sending this in. Will be put to good use for sure around the house and in my uh, projects, which hopefully will be more and more in the future, as in theory, next summer or next, yeah, next summer, this year's summer, because we are already after the New Year's. Uh, I will build myself... Uh, a bit of a better work area because now I don't have one and the one that I used to have was quite cramped and quite small. But I will make something better for me and the channel. So that's about it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I really recommend you, you get this tool. <laughs> really nice. It, it just feels good in the hand, honestly. And yeah, as always, feel free to ask whatever you need in the comments and see you in the next video. Bye.